Hello, my name is Wesley Bellman, and today I'm going to talk about how to use the uh, Cortex XOR um, and its integration with um, Elasticsearch. So this is my fresh um, installation of Cortex XOR. So this is what um, your uh, first dashboard will look like if you first installed Cortex XOR. Um, there's not a lot of customization here with this dashboard. Um, if you want to use Cortex XOR with Elasticsearch, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your Cortex XOR machine can connect to Elasticsearch to your Elasticsearch cluster. So I will go over to PowerShell where I'm logged into uh, my Cortex XOR machine, and I will uh, just do a curl command on my um, Elasticsearch uh, on the IP where my Elasticsearch cluster is, and I'm running that on port 9200, which is the default port for Elasticsearch. Um, so when I run that curl command, I get this uh, uh, vanilla response from uh, Elasticsearch. This is the built-in response. Um, if you're not actually querying anything, if you just send it a, a general get request, it responds um, with a tagline, you know, for search. Um, this is this is very helpful. It just kind of it's similar to a ping. It's just a way to make sure that you are connected and that um, the Elasticsearch uh, cluster is working as expected. So now, if we go back to Cortex XOR, we can install um, Elasticsearch, uh, the integration um, on the Elasticsearch machine from the Elasticsearch inter or from the Cortex XOR interface. So first, we go here. We go to uh, Marketplace. Um, and then we search for elastic search. Um, so we will talk about these integrations in another video, elastic search feed and elastic search monitoring, um, especially the feed that's actually very important if you're using elastic search as your sim. Um, but in this case, I just want to be able to use uh, the general the generic elastic search um, integration, um, which you can see is um, works works with the integration elastic um looks like it's it's supported and, and published by palo alto networks so let us install this integration um and it will update the base which is great so let's install So the base is just like an integration or a basic set of content that you received when you first installed Cortex XOR. So in my case, my base, since I just installed this fresh, my base is a little bit out of date. And so it, um, and so it uh, upgraded it for me, which is fantastic. So I should, probably should have hit refresh when that came up, but that is fine. I will hit refresh here um, just to make sure that everything is updated. All right, so now we have this integration. So let's look at the integration a little bit. So we can see it's called Elasticsearch v2 it's because they updated it. It's a database. Elasticsearch is a NoSQL database. Um, it supports version six and later. So if we go back to this, we can actually see that my Elasticsearch version is 7.6.2. So I will be great for uh, working with that Elasticsearch cluster. And we have three commands. So let's review the commands. So this will query an index. Um, this will search an index. And this will get mapping fields. So it returns the schema of the index to fetch from. Um, this is really uh, used for debugging purposes. OK, great. Now that we have looked at the three different commands associated with uh, Elasticsearch integration, um, we will move on to creating an actual instance of this integration. Uh, Elasticsearch uh, integration will not work, nor will any integration work without an actual instance um, of that integration being created. Um, so um, we will come back to these three specific commands. Um, you, don't, you don't have to remember them right now. Um, fortunately, there's only three, so maybe they're somewhat easy to remember. Um, but first, we will install, we will create an instance of this integration. To create an instance, you go to settings on the left. And here we have integrations. This is the, the first item, so you don't need to um, don't need to click anywhere. And then just scroll down um, 
Now, if it's too far, you can just add an elastic. Perfect, elastic search v2. And then we will add an instance. Same elastic search v2 instance one. I'll just say, since mine is actually help, um, I'll just say help. I'll just call it help. Um, this is not fetching incidents. We'll talk about that in another video. Um, don't need to put any of this. Really, the only thing you need is the server URL, which we've already uh, shown. So I will go get that. Um, we're not going to use uh, security here. I'm just using a firewall to make sure that um, the uh, that my Elasticsearch uh, cluster can only connect to um, can only connect to Cortex XOR to this Cortex XOR machine. However, no, um, normally you would want to use security. Of course, I will. Um, I will be discussing how to secure Elasticsearch in a different video. Um, but right now, I'm just going to um, put in the server URL because that is all that is actually required. Um, so that's great. So just take this address. And then let us run test to make sure that it works. And that is successful. So that is a uh, good integration. We will save and exit. All right, so now it is enabled and we have an ins instance of this integration called help. So let us go to the playground. If you're not familiar with Cortex X or the playground, is a great place to get started um, working with commands and learning about different integrations before you start to build them into your custom. So let us start making some actual queries um, in the uh, in the in the playground uh, in Cortex X. So you'll see that Elasticsearch. Um, has three commands, as we discussed earlier, it has search, ES search, and get mapping fields. Um, we're not going to uh, discuss get mapping fields in this video. And in fact, ES search and search are the same commands. They, they have the same results. Um, we can test that. Um, we, will, we will test that as well. So the way that the, the search command and the ES search command work is first you have to put an index. In this case, I want to search my entire cluster. So I don't, I'm not going to search a specific index. I'm just going to search the entire cluster. So I'm just going to put the slat symbol. And with the slat symbol, it'll search um, any index. And then I'm going to make the actual query. Uh, the query uses Lucene syntax. If you're not familiar with Lucene syntax, um, then the way that it works is the keys and values are separated by a colon. And then between that, you have ands and ors um, and in parentheses um, as, as needed. Um, so you put that uh, Lucene query between quotation marks. And in this case, um, I'm going to do a, uh, a simple query, just, uh, uh, just two key value pairs. Um, I'm going to do event ID one and image is SCR. If you're interested in threat hunting or Windows event logs, uh, you may already know what this is. And um, uh, and I'll be posting a video later uh, uh, showing how to use this to actually perform a threat hunt within Cortex X. But right now, I just want to focus on this very basic um, command here. So remember that AND or OR should be all caps. Um, and then you can perform the search. So dbot will say, say OK, and then it will return the result. In this case, there's a single result. So you can see um, there's one result. Um, the relation was equality, and it returns a score. Um, so this is the single result that was returned. And you can see several um, you can see several of the key value pairs here, the, the table entries. Um, this only showing uh, 20 rows so if you want to see everything then you click here and it'll take a second to generate the artifact viewer so 
So here you can see everything. You can see the index, um, the ID. Um, we could we could verify that this you know does actually uh, match the the search that we put, um, but but we know that it does um, in this case. So um, image, as you can see, has SCR at the end, so that works well. And then um, event ID is near the end. Uh, it's right here, and it's one. So one is, uh, if you're interested, is process creation. Um, and SDR is a file extension. So I will close this. And then um, back to the playground. So like I mentioned, the search and the ES search are the same command. So if we run, it doesn't matter if we change this to ES search. See, it's the same query, just change search to ES search, um, which is Elasticsearch search, and run it. Keybot is on it, and it is um, uh, the same result as you can see. So still a single, single result returned. It's this uh, this document which has ID etro, and if you scroll up here, it's the it's the same one etro. So those those two are really the same commands. So let's just run through the different arguments that are in those commands. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's search or ES search, they have the same arguments. So um, we can just run search. You see there are eight arguments here. So the two that we use were the two mandatory ones. Those are index and query. Um, if you're like uh, if you're like me in this case and you don't necessarily have a specific index that you want to search, then you can just uh, put splat as your index and it will search through all the indices. Um, and then your query, just make sure to use Lucene syntax. And you can look at the um, Apache Lucene documentation to see what Lucene syntax looks like. Um, explain, you can put explain true, the default is false, and then it will uh, get an explanation of a score for a query. Um, the default is, is false, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't calculate that explanation for you uh, by default. Um, fields, um, so if you, in this case, you could see there were, I believe, 56 fields as it mentioned. And if I didn't want to show all the, if I didn't want to return all those fields, I just want to return a subset because I'm not interested in record number or ID or something like that, then I don't have to return that field. I can just return the fields that I find valuable um, to, uh, to add to my context data. Um, if, if I didn't want to search from the beginning, I could start from a, a specific page. Um, generally, you want to search from the beginning because you just want to search the entire cluster. So, um, just uh, this, this is up to your preference, and and then if you um, you know if if you uh, have a large number of documents and you want to display a certain number per page, um, then you can you can adjust how many are displayed per page. Then uh, if you're interested in sorting uh, your response in different ways, the uh, default sort is based on the score. So let's see if we can. See, this score was just 6.34. That's um, usually uh, that value when it's a complete match, like it was here. Um, but but uh, if you um, uh, if you want to sort by something else, in uh, for instance, in, in this case where you're looking at log data, you might want to sort by time. Uh, then you could sort by time instead of by that score. Um, and then uh, sort order. The default value is ascending, but you could change it to descending. Um, that wouldn't necessarily make sense for score because you do want the usually want the most relevant document, not the least relevant document. But maybe with time, that that does make sense, um, depending on which which direction in time you're trying to search um, around a specific event. So those are the different arguments. Um, so I've covered the Elasticsearch integration, how to make sure that your machine is connected to Elasticsearch using curl, um, how to set up that um, that actual uh, integration. And then to set up an instance of that Elasticsearch integration and run a test to make sure that it works. And then how to run an actual query against that Elasticsearch integration in the playground. Um, I hope that this is able to get you started using Elasticsearch with Cortex-Xor to run several queries and then eventually to start building those into playbooks and automations um, as you work with Elasticsearch um, using Cortex-Xor.